Lijep povdan, dobrodošli na tritijem festivalu žanrskega filma Kurija Pot. Dan dvi, dan gigere. Predavanje, kot veste, bo potekalo v angliščini, tako da bom jaz zdaj zavoljil naših mednarodnih gostov, kar preklopila. So, welcome to the third Kurija Pot Žanra Film Festival, the second day, the day of our homage to HR Gigan. Um, I am very happy to introduce um, a poet, a teacher, but most importantly for us today, an expert uh, on HR Giger, Ilhana Škargic from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Please give her a warm welcome. The theme of today's uh, lecture is uh, Ilhana's uh, doctoral thesis, which she is uh, working on. And I'm very happy that Marko Witsik, a uh, friend uh, of Giger once and uh, a curator, has put us in touch. Uh, and now, without any further ado, Ilhana, I give you the stage and the screen. Thank you. So, um, hello everyone. I would like to welcome you all to this lecture today, uh, which is the beginning of the homage to H.R. Giger at Kuril Polt Festival. Uh, today, um, I am honored to have been invited uh, to, um, to contribute to this homage and uh, to be among fellow Giger fans and genre movie goers. Um, and I hope you will enjoy this linguistic slash artistic voyage. Uh, through Giger's over and astonishing creativity that has spawned some of the most iconic images both, both on the museum canvases and the silver screen. Um, so as Masha has delicately put <laughs> uh, before, uh, this is part of my PhD thesis on H.R. Um, Giger's art. Um, I'm a student in linguistics and at first um, you might think that the study of language and uh, Giger's art have no common ground. Um, however, with the recent research in the realm, uh, realm of visual language, the interdisciplinary discourse uh, between um, art and cognitive linguistics in particular has been made possible and uh, produces uh, some astonishing results. So, without further ado, um, so when we think of Giger, probably the first image that comes to our minds is the alien. Uh, ever since this uh, cinematic creation entered our cinematic consciousness, the art of H.R. Giger has become globally recognized as the visual representation of the fear and awe-inspiring unknown, uh, transforming the landscapes of the postmodernist views on existence and technological progress into those predominantly Gigeresque. Now, much has been said about the re revolutionary art of H.R. Giger. It's been called attractive, repulsive, otherworldly, fantastic, dark, etc. However, little is known about why exactly does his art simultaneously frighten and lure audiences around the world? What does it speak to inside of us? The answers lie in the common concepts that we all share. The, this lecture will show some of the most powerful visual me mechanisms uh, present in Giger's art as the conceptual viscera of our uh, system of thinking, thus shedding a new light on this unique artistic expression and undeniable visual appeal. Now, examples of visual metaphor are present in various art genres and periods. Art is, after all, the area where the study of metaphor once had its natural abode. However, due to its highly abstract nature, uh, one of the most potent movements in art history, particularly in terms of visual metaphor, is surrealism. Through the creative output by such culturally significant names such as Salvador Dali, here we have the uh, very famous uh, painting Persistence of Memory, then uh, René Magritte and M.C. Escher, surrealism, created in Paris at the beginning of the 20th century, strived to remodel the modernist view of man and generational impulses that accelerated the technological advancements, but also the massive destructory forces on a global scale. Manifestos of Surrealism by André Breton offer the fertile ground for the creation of a movement whose representatives, 
according to Carroll, abjured the canons of, re, uh, of rationality in order to put audiences in touch with what they believed were deeper, uh, deeper levels of reality. In his study of metaphor, Forceville notes that all opposites, such as feeling versus reason, beauty versus ugliness, substance versus spirit, um, are perceived as merely apparent by surrealists and that they are aspects of a deeper, deeper unity which they strive to show, adding that surrealism attempted to subvert the existing uh, models of looking at reality and to propose new ways of looking uh, at uh, novel uh, metaphor. Now, when it comes to H.R. Giger and the 20th century, um, he was an artist heavily influenced by uh, the main tenets of surrealism, although definite distinctions cannot be made. Giger's work surpasses the ordinary drawers of artistic genres and is often found on the verge of fantastic realism or even neo-surrealism. And um, since the major part of his opus dates back to the 1960s and expands all the way to the 21st century. Um, however, uh, the quality of his prom most prominent works is often matched to that of surrealism because of the reconceptualization of reality in his art that is highly reminiscent of that created by surrealists. Hans Rudi Giger is one of the most important representatives in this art genre and one of the most recognizable uh, world artists and synthesists of several types of art, especially visual arts and film. Uh, his works show the states of, uh, state of consciousness uh, uh, of the modern civilization and present a remodulation of the modernist view on man and his generational impulses inside several types of artistic expression. He was internationally recognized for his effort and awarded with, with numerous awards, including the Academy Award for Best Achievement in Visual uh, Effects for the film a Alien, for his contribution to the reflection of the Industrial Revolution. From breathtaking paintings, now we, hear, we see s just uh, uh, some of here uh, present, the Alpha, the Schacht 7 and Passage uh, 21, to album covers such as ELP's Brain Salad Surgery, Debbie Harry's Cuckoo, and Tripticons, which is the most, probably the most recent one from 2014, to furniture pieces, for example, I think everybody is pretty familiar with the microphone stand for the band Korn, <laughs> and uh, the Harkonnen table and chairs for the unrealized film Dune, to uh, architectural uh, creations, uh, especially the Giger bars in Switzerland, in Kor in Gruyere, and um, a deeply rooted cultural legacy that permeates the cinematic and other works even today, Giger has been at the forefront of fantastic realism. And um, moreover, as the Austrian artist and one of the founders of fantastic realism, Ernst Fuchs says, um, Giger discovers the archaeology of today and tomorrow, showing at the same time the new technologically conditioned traits of the human universe of the 21st century. The British director Ridley Scott characterizes his work as the touch into our deepest uh, drives and instincts, whose aesthetics is the ultimate call of the intensity and imagination, which necessarily bring, bring, brings to life human reaction. And in this sense, he compares him to Francis Bacon and Hieronymus Bosch. The universal, universal metaphorical nature of Giger's works has resulted in global recognizability and a massive influence on the world culture. Surrealism in his works surpasses the ordinary frames provided in the arti uh, artistic expression in such a measure that it gained its own genre, the biomechanics, and uh, um, based on which a special and recognizable symbolic system has been developed. As we can see here uh, in the introduction to H.R. Giger's retros retrospective from 1964 to 1985, there's a really nice uh, sentence that I think perfectly summarizes the biomechanics. It says, a universe where organic and inorganic forms are shaped by the biomechanical aesthetic, the dialectic of man and machine, where flesh and bone join magma and metal in synergistic ballet. I think it's a very powerful statement to the, to the strength of um, biomechanics. Now, um, the conceptual metaphor and metonymy, um, as the primary human artifact, art is capable of showing the main concerns of the artists as forebearers of mankind. 
The forms in which these concerns uh, are shown often vary from one period to another, but one of the features that prominently displays the conceptualization and reconceptualization of human identity is often shown through the mechanism of metaphor. Now, the significant change in the traditional view of metaphor is presented in the seminal work of Flakov and Johnson, um, cognitive linguists. Um, the work is called Metaphors We Live By, in which they say that uh, metaphor is primarily a matter of thought and action and only derivatively a matter of a language. Uh, also pointing to the human conceptual system as metaphorical in its nature. This plays a key role in our perception of reality. The way we think, the act, uh, the way we experience things, this is all rich with metaphor. Uh, therefore, metaphor is not seen as an exclusive linguistic item, but as part of our thinking system and as such present not only in language, but in other creations of mankind as well. Conceptual metaphor is comprised of two domains. You have the abstract domain, or the domain we wish to understand, also known as the target domain, and the domain we used in order to understand the abstract one, or the source domain. Now, let's, let us give an, an example here. We have uh, a famous conceptual metaphor, which is the following, you can see here, uh, love is a journey. And Lakoff offers a number of examples, such as, look how far we've come, uh, we may have to go our separate ways. The relationship isn't going anywhere. Now, with the use of this conceptual metaphor, we understand one domain of experience, which is love, in terms of a very different domain of experience or journeys. The reason uh, lies in the abstract nature of the concept of love. We cannot think of it in physical terms, and uh, which requires help in the sense of mapping the concept on a more known domain of journeys, which we are uh, able uh, to comprehend more easily. Another central uh, conceptual uh, phenomenon is the metonymy. The difference between conceptual metaphor and metonymy lies in the number of domains we use. Um, whereas conceptual metaphor connects two domains using the formula, formula A is B, uh, conceptual metonymy revolves around only one domain, where the formula is A for B. So if we are to say Ljubljana is hosting a five-day genre festival in April, Ljubljana stands for its citizens. So metonymy would be here, city for its people. Now, in his research of the domains in pictorial metaphors, Forceville states, it, if metaphor characterizes thinking and is thus not an exclusive attribute of language, it should be capable of assuming nonverbal and uh, multimedial uh, manifestation. Uh, this closely connects to the point made by Carroll, who focuses on the specific quality of reference in the visual image created intentionally by human activity, and um, which is recognized simply by looking rather than by some process such as decoding or reading, thus omitting the uh, necessity of perception mediated by code. Now, Ortiz offers several examples of primary metaphors defined as part of our cognitive unconscious, inherent to the human being, a consequence of the nature of the brain, the body, and the world we live in. Now we have several of those, and uh, these include good is bright, bad is dark, emotionally intimacy is proximity, relationships are enclosures, and importance is size or volume. Um, of course, um, we have metaphor, primary meta metaphors uh, or, sorry, metonymies such as part for the whole, which are also abundant in H.R. Giger's work, as shown in the following section. Now, the corpus for this research is comprised of various publications of H.R. Giger's art and encompasses the following editions. H.R. Giger's Necronomicon from 1984, H.R. Giger's Biomechanics from 1990, Giger's Alien in 94, Species Design, H.R. Giger, 95, H.R. Giger's Film Design in 96, Necronomicon 1 and 2, The Schaffen for Alien from 2007, uh, ARH Plus, Retrospective, etc., etc., uh, many others. These monographies and other forms of artistic uh, in, uh, presentation contain several hundreds of reprints of Giger's work over a four-decade period of creation, some of which appear in more than one publication. Now, based on the corpus, we can distinguish certain art phases. 
The first phase was the early pre-biomechanoid period uh, in the early 1960s, represented with works grouped around the topic, uh, the atomic children. Now we have the second, the biomechanoid period, from the, um, in the 1970s, characterized by the depiction of the merger of humanity and technology, and represented with works grouped around the collection uh, Necronom, Biomechanical Landscapes, etc. And we have the third, the post-biomechanoid post period, uh, which is the 1980s and beyond, uh, characterized by multimodal contributions to the world of film and interior uh, design. Since um, we have the visual metaphors in these works of art almost exclusively, exclusively concern the human body, which points to the surrealist drive to reconceptualize the perception of reality. Certain, sorry. <laughs> Certain connections can be established to further emphasize the claim for embodied cognition, uh, which represents the view that human beings' capacity for abstract thinking fundamentally depends uh, on uh, the affordances and limitations of the human body. Now, this is one of the crucial reasons for researching tropes in visual and multimodal discourse. According to Forceville, since fo focusing solely on their linguistic manifestations would prove insufficient in light of Lakoff and Johnson's theory of metaphor. Now, we will start with the first period, which is here. We have the examples of visual metaphor and metonymy in Giger's art. And we start with the We Atomic Children from 1964. Now, as the title suggests, these paintings represent a powerful commentary on the post-WW2 fascination with nuclear bombs and the result on the mankind. We see people in desolate surroundings trying to perform mundane activities with only a limb or two. Somewhere, they are missing their skin, they walk on sharp bones. In others, heads converse without the benefit of a full body. The metonymy part for the whole, in this case is limb for the body, has provided a conceptual basis for these images. The, the crown of this series is the same titled Atom Kinda, or at, uh, Atomic Children. Sorry. You will see it here. Uh, where the beginning of the merger between the flesh and the machine, or the biomechanoid creation, is noticeable starting from the legs of the creatures with the masks which are connected to their revealed mechanized spines. Now we move on. Sorry. I went backwards. <laughs> okay. We move on to the Shaft series in 1996, sorry, 1966. This was inspired by Giger's dreams of endless deep shafts. Combined by the basement steps of his family house in Core, his hometown, which supposedly had underground tunnels connected to their property. The play between light and darkness offers the conceptual metaphor circumstances are surroundings, where the various shafts, stairs, and sources of light represent the overwhelming notion of situational and emotional enclosures of the modernized industrialized existence, where people transform into creatures only partly resembling the human form. Uh, we have more shafts here, but I chose the, these ones, although you have seen shaft number seven before. A similar metaphorical construct can be seen from his birth machine selection uh, from 1964 to 1967, where Giger depicts the birth process as a mechanism with mechanical features, liking the biological system to a pistol. Now, Grof, in his analysis of the paintings, notes that the birth process, although governed by anatomical, physiological, and biochemical laws, possesses distinctly mechanical features. For example, uterine contractions of immense power, and points to the hydraulic quality of the entire experience. Therefore, it is possible to verbalize the metaphor that the painting contains as a woman's body is a machine. Closeness of the biological and mechanical, as well as the merger that happens 
that happens in the post-civilizational surroundings in Giger's art allude to the alienating quality of mankind's current state of deconstruction, pointing to the alien impulses or the need for transformation inside and outside of human bodies. Giger returns to the conceptual metonymy involving body parts with his sculpture America, somewhere it is titled as Voices of America, in 1968. The work consists of two arm slash leg creatures continuing his Bettler construct, which you see on the right, uh, painted on the, uh, in the colors of the American f uh, flag, holding guns. Now, in some images, the sculptures are, as you can see, turned to one another. This concept is further developed in his unrealized film project, The Mystery of San Gotardo, from 1994, about a race of creatures uh, consisting of these two limbs, and in the paintings for another unrealized film, The Tourist, uh, from 1982, about the race of aliens that come to Earth. Now, um, the landscape series is especially rich with conceptualism. In the paintings that depart from Giger's usual monochromatic approach, for example, we have here landscape 10 and 11, Giger taught uh, as the only uh, of the only accurate portrayal of the physiological and organic damage to the environment by our uh, civilization. <coughs> Sorry. The transferal of human skin uh, surface on the infected planet where the skin acts as a, meto a metonymic representation of human beings. This thought is further developed in somewhat controversial landscapes created in 1973. I'm sure most of you have seen these babies, um, where the landscape view no longer uh, exists in a traditional uh, uh, manner, but uh, the view is actually created from the infants. Now, from 14 onwards, including 29, which you see here, in 1974 with the baby soldiers. Uh, they have all various stated, uh, stages of uh, an infectious disease. The frequent topic of overpopulation is here presented with an interesting take on the age metonymy. Now, instead of adults, Giger uses the infancy stage of the development of human being to connect it to a growing insectoid multitude, even though babies are usually born, usually one, of, one at a time. A swarm of babies in the landscape imitates uh, insect and rep reptile reproduction stages. Thus, the metonymic mechanism can be verbalized, uh, verbalized as infant for adult. Now, in 1974, Giger works on a series of paintings and subsequent sculptures inspired by his companion, the late actress Lee Tobler. The metonymy ahead for the body, um, as part of the part for the whole metonymy, uh, is further emphasized in Lee II, which we see here on the right, where the head is clearly detached from the rest of the being. Also, pretty biomechanical. Uh, in its structure. The conceptual metaphor, emotional intimacy is proximity, is dominant in almost all of his paintings, especially those from the latter uh, biomechanoid period. Examples such as Necronome 5, which we see on the left, Departure for Sabbath, and Biomechanoid, uh, all done in 1976, show human figures woven between mechanical figures, alluding to the combination of two elements from two different domains, human equals biological and machine equals mechanical, uh, offering the metaphor human body is a machine. Moreover, the conceptual metaphor emotional intimacy is proximity, can be further developed into the construct emotional intimacy is physical murder because the proximity of the characters in the artworks is actually a physical symbiosis between the biological and the mechanical to a degree that is much higher than its figurative application. The metaphor is salient in the cycle erotomechanics, for example, in the paintings uh, erotomechanics uh, 6 and 7, which, is, which we see here, <coughs> sorry. Cables invade orifices of ships, extraterrestrial uh, beings protrude through one another in a quiet merger of born and made. 
Now, this new metaphorical construct points to what Susan Sontag refers to human nakedness in the absence of technology. Now, we no longer use technological advancement as, uh, advancements as our tools, but we are in their servitude. Therefore, Giger actually created a conceptual metaphor on the foundation of the individual and collective digitalized transformation unsurpassed in recent history. Now, um, the story of Jodorowsky's Dune is perhaps as intoxicating and intriguing as the film itself would have been, not in the least without the unparalleled contribution by H.R. Giger. With the work on this film, which was based on Frank Herbert's masterpiece of the same title, Giger created Harkonnen furniture, which we saw before, to accompany the visual feel of the film, along with numerous paintings uh, portraying the environment of the planet. Now here's where the combination of the landscape and the biomechanics occurs. For example, in the Dune wor uh, worm in biomechanical landscape. And in Dune, uh, Dune 2 and 4, which we see here, we encounter a powerful conceptual metaphor in the form of importance is size or volume. <coughs> Sorry. The castle Harkonnen has to physically embody the importance of the family. Thus, the body is disproportionate from the rest, uh, from the head, and uh, the, the, uh, so that the, the torso holds the strength or the foundation uh, of the strength. And the size has to visually overwhelm anyone who would dare to tackle the dark, uh, the dark rulers. Uh, the full intention of the painting is realized when we um, learn of the castle's use of the beings in front of it. Now, it actually absorbs their energy, which adds another layer to the already powerful imagery for the Harkonnen residents. Similar metaphorical construct can be observed in the Victory series, where the viewer is intentionally positioned by Giger to be below the creature, which looms above and thus shows its significance and superiority. Now, last but not least, the design for Ridley Scott's Alien, uh, which itself uh, hailed from paintings such as Necronom II and was further developed into the monster that set a precedent in the Hollywood cinematic history. Never before has the biological dimension of an extra extraterrestrial being being so detailed and transformed into an element of the movie, as noted by Arenas. Se uh, sexual symbolism speaks from every cellular frame, uh, from the entrances of the alien ship, moist inner facilities, bone-like structures of the walls, to the ship as the mother's uterus, and the return to the womb that is punished by death. The creature represents pure, vicious perfection, something that cannot, uh, can be somewhat uh, imitated by humans by um, becoming a part of its natural cycle or the host for the chest burster, um, and, uh, but never reached completely. In the introduction to H.R. Giger's retrospective, James Collins says, nothing can be more difficult than to create something as a human being that has no human resonance whatsoever. Indeed, the alien is the embodiment of our fear of the unknown, the ideal biological killing machine, not plagued by remorse, guilt, lust, and any other uh, human emotion. <clears throat> it resonates only the Ouroboros of existence whose sole definition and purpose is to live in the universe uh, that has reached its biological pinnacle with the creature, only to be eaten alive from inside out once that the final evolutionary stage has been achieved. Thus, the final conceptual metaphor presented by H.R. Giger is the ultimate one, alien is human. In order to understand our own reason for existence, Giger gives us a mirror to hold to our own alien identity. Uh, on the planet we clearly, uh, clearly do not belong to, judging from mankind's mistreatment of it and itself since the dawn of time. Now, um, 
there is a whole conceptual universe inside H.R. Giger's cinematic works, which uh, include music videos and short films, some of which we will be uh, able to see later on in the evening. Now, they deserve a separate presentation altogether. However, we will note one conceptual metaphor. Uh, in the film Swiss Made, 2069, the protagonist, an alien visitor, um, observes our world through a camera that substitutes his eyes. And the scenes that present his point of view are all done uh, subjectively uh, with, uh, through the lens of the camera. So um, here, the conceptual metaphor that underlines the scenes is understanding is seeing. Um, there are, of course, a number of other uh, conceptual metaphors and metonymies in these works of art. Um, however, perhaps we will have a chance to um, discover some of them later on. And um, based on the presented research, we can conclude that the work of H.R. Giger is significant in terms of the uh, visual representation of those central questions posed by modern technological currents that reshape the concepts shared on a global level. In this sense, taking into account the creativity via various media, reflecting the McLuhan's saying uh, the medium is, is the message, a study of the work of this artist appears that much more important in the postmodernist heritage of the 20th century. Now, the powerful metaphors and metonymies presented, some of them in this lecture, are just the tip of the iceberg in the rich tapestry of Giger's creation. And I doubt it will even be possible to map most of them in a PhD thesis. Um, nevertheless, um, I hope I was able to show the magnitude and magnificence of the powerful visual language conveyed through that visionary art of H.R. Giger, and that further horizons await and invite all of you uh, who wish to discover more of the so-called conceptual fantastic residing in, in these and other biomechanoid uh, masterpieces. Here are some of the um, references that I use, and thank you all. <laughs> Uh, maybe just a final word. Uh, Ilhana will be with us the entire festival, so if you want to talk to her, ask her something, give a comment, uh, she will be happy to talk to you in a more informal setting in the cafe, of course. And we will also be putting up the lecture later on after the festival, because I'm sure all of us will want to revisit some of these points. Uh, you know, so uh, follow the uh, website kuriapout.org. Thank you for being here, and of course, see you at 6 and at 8 and at 10. <laughs>